Hello and welcome to our video tutorial on adverb clauses. This is the third video in a series of four video tutorials on subordinate clauses. So let's go ahead and get started. An adverb clause is a subordinate clause that acts as an adverb in a sentence. There are two important parts to this definition. The first, of course, is that it is a subordinate clause. And much like other subordinate clauses, it contains a subject and a verb, but it cannot stand alone as a sentence. That's what makes it subordinate or less important than an independent clause. And secondly, of course, um, an adverb clause is acting as an adverb in a sentence. If you recall from elementary school or your study of grammar at an earlier grade level, an adverb is a word in a sentence that modifies a verb, an adjective, or another adverb in the sentence. So, of course, an adverb clause is essentially the same thing. It's just a more complex adverb in the sentence. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, an adverb clause generally is going to be telling when, where, why, in what manner, or under what conditions something is happening or looking at the verb. And in my experience, in my recommendation, an adverb clause, the majority of the time, is going to be modifying the verb in a sentence unless there's some type of comparison being made. And finally, uh, the important thing that you want to look at is uh, an adverb clause always, always, always begins with a subordinating conjunction. So here I've given you a recommended list of subordinating conjunctions. Uh, this is not every subordinating conjunction in the English language, but it is the majority of the ones we will be using for our tutorial today. I'm going to give you just a minute or so to get that information copied down. All right, welcome back. Uh, before we get started, I'm just going to let you see the two different ways that an adverb clause can appear in a sentence. It's essentially that the subordinating conju uh, conjunction begins the sentence, or the subordinating conjunction comes in the middle of the sentence. In my opinion, adverb clauses are the easiest of the three different types of subordinate clauses. So, for example, an adverb clause, if it comes at the beginning of the sentence, uh, will be followed by a comma. If an adverb clause comes in the middle of the sentence, there will be no commas involved. So we're going to look at these two sentences. Because James has studied the 50 states, he knows interesting facts about each one. And then, I will do well on my test tomorrow as long as I review my notes from the chapter. Both of these sentences contain adverb clauses. It's just that one sentence has the adverb clause at the beginning, and one sentence has an adverb clause at the end. Here, of course, we see that we are beginning with a subordinating conjunction here. And the adverb clause will end with my comma here. And we identified that if the adverb clause comes at the beginning of the sentence, it must be followed by a comma. On the second sentence, or the second example here, if the adverb clause comes in the middle of the sentence, and the subordinating conjunction is in the middle of the sentence, there are no commas involved, and it will end with a comma, I'm sorry, with an end mark at the end of the sentence. So essentially that's the easy placement of adverb clauses. There are a couple of rare exceptions when you start looking at elliptical clauses, but we will cover that at a later date. Okay, we're going to go on and look at a couple of example sentences that we can label together. As always, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video here so that you have a chance to copy down these uh, four sentences if you want, and then we will go ahead and get started with labeling the sentences together. I will be here when you're ready. Okay, so let's look at sentence A. If we knew the telephone number, we could call the store for directions. We can see here that the sentence begins with a subordinating conjunction if, so our adverb clause is going to go all the way until the comma or the punctuation. Within that adverb clause, because it is a subordinate clause, we will have a subject, we, and a verb, new. If you look at the rest of the sentence, we could call the store for directions. That is an independent clause. It has a subject, it has a verb, and it can stand alone as a sentence. In sentence B, the actor became nervous because he couldn't remember his lines. Again, what we have here is a subordinating conjunction in the middle of the sentence, so that's a reminder that we're going to take this clause all the way till the end mark here. Within that adverb clause, we should have a subject, he, 
and a verb could remember. And that leaves us with the independent part of the sentence, the actor became nervous. In sentence C, call Antonio so that you can invite him to the concert. Our subordinating conjunction from the list is so that. It's in the middle of the sentence, so we know that the adverb clause is going to go all the way till the end mark. If it is a, an adverb clause, a subordinate clause, there will be a subject and verb within that clause. You is the subject. Can invite is the verb. Then we look at call Antonio as the independent portion of the sentence or the independent clause, sometimes called simple sentence. And then, of course, finally, in sentence D, before you answer the question, you must read the passage in your book. Here is my subordinating conjunction. It indicates that there will be a subordinate clause or an adverb clause in the sentence. We're going to take it all the way to the comma. Within that highlighted portion, within that adverb clause, you should have a subject and a verb. You is the subject. Answer is the verb. Uh, before we move on, I just want to remind you that if an adverb clause comes at the beginning of the sentence, it will go all the way until the comma. For example, A and D. If the subordinating conjunction comes in the middle of the sentence, it will still begin with a subordinating conjunction. It will go to the end mark here and here. All right, it's going to be your turn to practice, so we're going to go ahead and move on. I'm going to give you a couple of sentences from some popular literature, and we'll see how you guys can do. All right, go ahead and copy those sentences down. Take a look. Get your highlighter. Get your pen. See if you can identify the adverb clause in the sentence. If you need help, go back and look at your list of subordinating conjunctions and see how you do. All right, let's take a look at how you did. Sentence 1, the adverb clause, when the towering ruins gave way to flatter ground. Sentence 2, as the fire in 10 billion angry sparks moved with flaming ease from room to room and then up the stairs. And then, of course, sentence 3, while I talk. If you look at these three sentences, the portion of the sentence that remains in black is the independent clause. All of those also include subjects and verbs, and they can stand alone as a sentence. That's it for now. Until next time.